phonograms, and spelling rules. At this point, we are reaching the heart of the logic of English, the phonograms and rules which explain 98% of English words. We are going to be learning the rules and the phonograms and applying them to spelling words and learning how to read. I want to begin by learning the A through Z phonograms. These form the basis for being able to write all of the multi-letter phonograms, and I think they are a really great place to start for teaching our students. As we go through the A through Z phonograms, I want you to note if there are any sounds that are new for you or different from what you have been taught. When I teach, I like to use uh, the flashcards that from the Logic of English. We have on one side the uh, sample words and dictionary cues. These are very helpful so that you as the teacher don't necessarily need to have these mastered before teaching them. You also notice that I punched a little hole in the corner so that I could put a ring in them and keep them together. So those are just a few tips for you. Let's go ahead and work on A through Z. A, A, A. Go ahead and repeat it. B. When you say B, make sure to isolate the sound B only and not add an uh to the end like a u sound because your students will write bu if you say b so it's just b k s d this is another one to isolate the d sound and not d e e f e g j I, I, E, Y. Are any of you surprised? That's four sounds. I, I, E, Y. It says E as in stadium and Y as in onion. J. K. U. M. N. A, O, U. Now, notice with qu, q always needs a u. u is not a vowel here. This is a multi-letter phonogram that says qu, r, s, z. Notice we're teaching both sounds here. T, a, u, u, u. Would you like to hear that one again? A, u, u, u. That's right. There are four sounds. U. W, X, Y, I, I, E, Z. Very good. So were there some sounds that were new for you? I know that when I first began to learn the logic of English, some of them were surprising to me. Consonants, vowels, and syllables. Let's begin by asking a question. What is a vowel? Now, many of you are probably thinking, well, A, E, I, O, U, and sometimes Y. In fact, I speak around the nation to educators and parents, and I kind of find it really fun to have everyone recite this together because it's common cultural knowledge that we all know that the vowels are A, E, I, O, U, and sometimes Y. But as we said earlier, this is a real oversimplification to the language. So it's much better than rotely memorizing an oversimplification to understand what is a vowel. A vowel is a sound that can be sustained or sung. It can be made louder and it can be made softer. So if you try to call for help without the vowel, you'll notice you can't. Help, help. Also, vowels are spoken with an open mouth. They have an open position. Now let's contrast this to a consonant. A consonant is a sound that is blocked in some way by the mouth, by the teeth, by the tongue, by the lips. It is a blocked sound. A consonant cannot be sustained or sung, and it cannot be controlled for volume. When we understand what a vowel and a consonant is, then we can do an experiment rather than just rotely memorizing. So we could experiment with these phonograms. So is this a vowel or a consonant? Let's test all three sounds. First, we'll test a. a ha, ha. It's a vowel sound because we can sing it and our mouth is open. A, a, a. We can sing it and our mouth is open, so it's a vowel. A, a, a. We can sing it, our mouth is open, so it's a vowel. How about this one? B, b. Can you sing it? 
No, and what's blocking the sound? B, your lips. So it is a consonant. Now that mysterious Y, and sometimes Y. Well, let's test it. Y, the Y sound. Y, Y, Y. That's a consonant sound. It's blocked. What's blocking it? Your teeth and your tongue. How about I? I, I, I. That's a vowel sound. I, that's a vowel sound. And E, 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 that's a vowel sound. So this is both a consonant and a vowel, depending on what sound it's making. By the way, what about the I in onion? Their I is saying Y. And you're right, it's acting as a consonant. All right, let's talk about syllables. What is a syllable? A syllable is the rhythmic beat in words formed by opening and closing the mouth to say the vowels and consonants. It's important to understand that it's like a little bit like a drum. Our mouths open to say the vowels and then they close to say the consonants and this forms a beat. In English, every syllable must have a vowel. And this rule will come into play when we get to the silent final E rules. That's one of the definitions of a word in English. Now, knowing how to count syllables is vital to being able to read and spell in English because syllable breaks will tell us a lot about how a word is spelled. Now, here are a few tips for you on being able to count the number of syllables within a word. The first thing you can do is you can utilize the information that your mouth opens to say a vowel sound. And you can count the syllables by placing your hand under your chin and counting the number of vowels because it's that opening for the vowel and then closing that forms the syllable. So every syllable has only one vowel sound and your mouth will open for that sound one time per syllable. So let's try the word bookshelf. Book shelf. Can you feel your mouth opening two times? That it's a two syllable word. How about computer? Computer. You can feel it opening three times, so it's a three syllable word. One more table. Table. Two times, a two syllable word. Another way that you can count syllables is to hum the word. So let's take a word like elephant. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Three syllables. Uh, somehow when we hum the words, we put those breaks in there and we can hear the syllables clearly. How about speaker? Hmm, hmm. Two syllables. When teaching syllable breaks, we can also teach students to clap the syllables or to march to the syllables so they really kinesthetically experience the beat and rhythm of words. It's also great to read students a lot of poetry and rhythmic language so that they begin to get a sense of the rhythm of the language uh, and then they can begin to apply that to reading and spelling. Spelling list one. Now that we've learned A through Z, all their sounds and how to write them, we're be ready to begin to apply this knowledge to spelling and to reading one syllable words. I want you to notice uh, how we teach this. We're going to teach through a process called dictation. And I would suggest that you turn to page 76 in your teacher's training manual. There's a place there for you to write the words uh, as you learn them uh, along with me. Now, I will say a word and then I'm going to ask you to break it into its sounds or to segment it. And then you are going to write the word and then I will write the word. Before I tell you to write it, please don't write it because we'll be talking about it. So these words will be very simple as if you're teaching a beginning reader. The first word is dog. The dog ran down the street. Dog. Go ahead and say dog and then segment it into its sounds. Dog. D. Og. Now you hear me segmenting it, but it's really important that your student is doing that work. So make sure that you are sounding out the word aloud, broken into its individual sounds. Then go ahead and write the word. And as you write it, say the sounds aloud. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> All right, now that you've written the word, let's write it together. I want you to sound it out, and I will write it as you sound out the sounds. D, A, G. And now let's read the word. D, A, G, dog. The second word is hat. I wore a big hat, hat. Go ahead and say the word hat and then break it into its sounds. H, at. 
Now you may write it, sound it out as you write it, and then help me to write it. At. And let's read it together. At. Hat. The third word is quilt. I have a warm quilt on my bed. Let's sound out quilt. Qu, i, o, t. Notice I held up two fingers here to indicate that this phonogram has two letters in it. So go ahead and write quilt, and as you write it, sound it out. And now help me to write it. Qu, i, o, t. Whenever we have a phonogram that has more than one letter, we'll underline it to show that those letters are working together to make one sound. So this is qu, i, o, t, quilt. The fourth word is soft. The kitten feels very soft. Let's sound it out together. S, a, f, t. Go ahead and write it. And now help me to write it. S, a, f, t. And let's read it together. S, a, f, t, soft. The fifth word is big. That is a big car, big. Let's sound it out together. B, i, g. Go ahead and write it. And now help me to write it. B, i, g. And let's read it. B, i, g, big. Once we've taught our spelling words, I like to practice them with students. Um, when we practice spelling words, though, it's important that the practice is meaningful. Too often when we have spelling words for students, we tell them, go off and copy the word 50 times, and we hope that just that kind of rote learning will help them. Rather, it's a good idea to have them engage these words in the context, once again, of the whole language so that they understand uh, why they're important and how they're useful. So here's just a few ideas for you. First of all, you could teach uh, that a noun is a person, place, thing, or idea. And you could ask the students, are there any things in this list? And they could say that a hat and a quilt, and maybe they'd say a dog, or maybe they'd want to call a dog a person, that's fine, are things. Then I would say, well, are there any words we could use to describe on this list? Oh, soft describes and big describes. Oh, could we put any of these words together to make phrases? Oh, we'd have a soft quilt or a big dog. We could have the students write the words on index cards and then rearrange the index cards to make their own phrases out of them. We could have the students uh, write little phrases using their spelling words um, and combine them in new ways. We could also teach them about plurals. We could say, well, I have one dog, but what happens if I have two? What do I say? Oh, I say dogs. Yeah, what do you hear at the end? You hear a s sound. Well, that's called a plural. To make a noun plural, just add the ending s unless the word hisses or changes. None of these hiss or change, so I probably wouldn't explain that um, the details of all that to them, but then we could make these plural and we could write dogs and hats and quilts. So you can see that once you learn some words, you can begin to use them in meaningful ways. There's a number of ideas on page 77 of the teacher's training manual that I think you'll find helpful for enhancing your teaching.